Okay, let's talk about childhood absence epilepsy. What is it? So this is one of the most common forms of pediatric epilepsy. It is considered benign and the average age of onset is somewhere between 4 and 10 years old, most commonly age 6. It's a generalized epilepsy and presumably it's genetic, meaning about uh, if you have childhood absence epilepsy, about 17% of uh, first-degree relatives may also have uh, absence seizures. Uh, and this epilepsy is thought to originate in the thalamus. So uh, what is the typical seizure that you'll see? Uh, so this typical absence seizure will be generally between 4 to 20 seconds and it most commonly is a staring spell. There's usually no loss of tone and no falling over. In about half of people, there will be some automatisms such as eyelid movements or mouth movements. And in 80 to 90% of people, you can provoke these seizures with uh, hyperventilating. Uh, sometimes a few years later, after the onset of the disease, you may also see generalized tonic-clonic seizures. This is rarer, though. So what comorbidities do uh, people with childhood absence epilepsy have? So about 60% of them will have some psychiatric comorbidity as well, with ADHD and anxiety being the most common. Uh, sometimes they can also have a little bit of difficulty in executive function compared to the healthy population. On the EEG, they will normally have a normal background, although sometimes you can also see generalized spike wave discharges or focal abnormalities. Uh, when you provoke an absence seizure, you'll see uh, 2.5 to 5 hertz spike and wave discharges, and classically it's around 3 hertz. If someone has a typical case, uh, usually no imaging is required, um, but if imaging is obtained, the MRI brain uh, does not normally have any abnormalities. How do you diagnose childhood absence epilepsy? So it does require all four of the following criteria. They have to have an age of onset between four and 10 years old. They have to be developmentally normal. And the seizures have to be brief between four and 20 seconds and fairly frequent, meaning tens per day. The seizures on the EEG do have to be uh, around 3 hertz generalized rhythmic spikes or double spike wave discharges. Other things to consider for someone with staring spells. These could be non-epileptic. They also could be behavioral episodes such as when someone has autism, if a teacher or parent is talking to them they might just uh, not want to listen behaviorally uh, and ADHD is also something that can mimic uh, these absence seizures. And also focal seizures is something to consider which can look uh, the same. So treatment for childhood absence epilepsy. There's two medications that are considered first line and about 50 to 60 percent of patients will experience seizure freedom. Uh, ethosuximide is the first one. Uh, it's an oral medication and it's thought to work on the T-type calcium channels in the thalamus. Some of the side effects include nausea, vomiting, drowsiness, or insomnia. Valproic acid is another medication that can be used. It's a good choice if there are other seizures, such as these uh, generalized tonic-clonic seizures. Um, it does unfortunately cause more attention deficit, though, than uh, ethosexamide. Another medication that can be used uh, second line is lamotrigine, and this is a good option in women of childbearing age, particularly if it, they've failed ethosexamide. It results in about 29% of people with seizure freedom. 
There are some medications that need to be avoided when someone has Epson seizures because these can provoke these seizures. So carbamazepine, vigabatrin, gabapentin, and tiagavine. And prognosis. So the prognosis of childhood absence epilepsy is very good. Most patients are seizure-free by puberty. And once they're seizure-free, the medication can be discontinued after two years of seizure freedom.